Hey, thanks for staying. Um, uh, first, before we take questions, I just want to um, say that it, this is very strange to do this without Kate, um, just because she's more than the star of the movie and the subject. She's even more than a collaborator. Um, it's also, uh, you know, when a guy's making a movie about a woman, um, it's always fraught with mistakes and stupid things and whatnot. Um, and I had four producers, women, that were women on the film, and they, they meant a lot to the film, and it's really good to have their voices. But I also have my wife, who's here, uh, who made up her own credit, um, Aider and a Better, which is my favorite credit in movie history. <laughs> Um, so please uh, join me in thanking Deanna Davis. Thank you. Um, okay, does anyone have any questions? So um, as far as directing Kate, um, was it part of the production process in um, like the, um, her digging into the books on suicide and really trying to connect with the character and even to the last outburst, was mm -hmm. that more her or was that part of like the production and the direction, the, your direction? The question's about Kate and I really kind of like what's real, right? And what's <coughs> in a way. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, she's playing, I mean, I basically asked Kate to do this impossible task, which was not only do you need to be yourself, but you also have to play yourself which is a significant thing. Um, but also you have to act in these reenactments which are purposely failures, meaning they're meant to not, to not be communicating some deep thoughts. They're meant to be failures of sort of expression or something. And then also, on top of that, you also have to embody some things that you may know about Christine Chubbuck and try to bring her to life in some way. Um, so what you see really is her going through the process, but also embodying and sort of enacting the things that we need for the film, so she's acting in that sense, but also really getting frustrated with this impossible task that I put in front of her. Um, this was the concept from the beginning of the film. I said, you know, I want it to be about how we can't tell the story, that I can't tell the story. Um, and because I've been thinking about Christine Chubbuck for a decade, and I never wanted to make like a straightforward documentary about it because I didn't think I could do that. Um, and so this is sort of about me and my inability to, to, to figure out how to tell this in some ways. And so she knew that, but it's one thing to say that as a concept, like, hey, this is the movie you want to make, and it's another thing to, when the cameras are rolling, how do you have, how can you possibly sort of embody that and do all that? And so. That's what you're seeing. So it is constantly a mixture of fact and fiction and authentic and staged. And um, hopefully that's a fruitful thing. Hopefully that leads you to sort of understand like sort of performance and understand sort of why people perform. And if that takes you into a place where you can understand Christine Chubbuck better, that's good. Um, I, it's, it's definitely not meant to be like an academic exercise and like what's real, what's not real or something. Um, but up to the very end, she's, so the ending was, we, we talked to the psychologist, and the psychologist said that line where he's like, uh, you know, she, she was angry, maybe you should think about that. Which, you know, that's obvious in some ways, but it was sort of like, took us, took us back, and we, we walked outside from that interview, and we're just like, we can't go through the reenactment of the suicide, like, that's just not going to work. Um, and so I scripted something, and Sean Price Williams, the cinematographer, scripted something, and Kate, by that point, was in this mental place where she just, she wasn't, you know, she just, she took the words and threw them all out and did it herself. And that last scene is, I would say, directed by her as much as, as it's directed by me um, in many ways. So, uh, so it's, it's all constantly, at the same time, fiction and nonfiction, like, really crammed together, I think. Well, because what I mean, what I, the thing that fascinated about me with uh, uh, about Christine Chubbuck to me was not necessarily her her suicide or that there was a tape that might exist or it was that all the questions that it brought up for me about looking at something and whether we should look at it or not 
and and that's just a question that I don't think is easily answered. I, it's it, it, that's that's a very strong sort of um, the the ending is very direct. You shouldn't be looking at this, right? But I don't I don't think the question is very easily answered because for some people I think if you're if you've educated your brain you can look at anything. And some people just look at it because it's voyeuristic or they want to be tantalized by someone else's death or something. Um, and that's something that, as a documentary filmmaker, that's... I mean, all every documentary filmmaker I know is obsessed with ethics. It's like everything you do every day, you have to think about these ethical questions. Um, or maybe I don't know a bunch of asshole documentary. There's probably a bunch of documentary filmmakers that are not enough obsessed with ethics, but the ones that I hang out with um, are generally, that's something that you can't shake, and we think about it almost too much, it's an obsession, and that's what the story brought up for me, personally. And so, the idea of just telling a sort of straightforward documentary portrait of a, a woman who kills herself because she's unable to have children, and she's depressed, and she does it that way, was inadequate to me. But exploring what it makes me think about, and in many ways the film, as you see, is less about Christine Chubbuck and more about the story of Christine Chubbuck and what that does to people. It's like, you know, the, the, there's a completely understandable human need. When someone commits suicide, especially in something as horribly spectacular as the way Christine Chubbuck did it, it, it makes you, it, it just unsettles you because we're, most of us are built to survive. That's just our natural thing. And so it creates this vacuum of meaning that we put ourselves in, you know, and what you see is in the film is that happens one after not one example after another. Someone, I don't know much about her, but this is what I think, or I was there, sort of, and this is the way you should play her, and, and, and I don't know how you could be so, I had so many lovers by the time I was 29, you know, though you see it again and again and again, and for, the film is my version of that in some ways, um, me trying to f understand and, and realizing maybe that I can't, so, um, this sort of layered, prismatic way through watching Kate is the only way I felt like I could do it. I'm curious about the relationship with the cinematographer, uh, who, far from heaven, and Philip, uh, he's brought a certain kind of, of camera vision. And what, how you worked with him, and what did he bring to a a 70-story television, not mainstream, uh, news station, and were, did any of that matter to you? First yeah, uh, the, so the questions about the cinematographer, Sean Price Williams, I, I think I counted it up, and including shorts and features, I edit also, um, we, we, uh, we've worked on like 18 films together, um, which is, like, first of all, means we're getting old, obviously. Second of all, means we, we, we've become like, it's so, this is such a maybe trite, stupid thing to say, but like, I feel like we're members of a band and we've been in a band for a really long time. You know, like, I'm, he's playing one instrument and I'm playing another, and, I, and we kind of know what we're going to do. Um, Sean is, is uh, beyond, and just like Kate is beyond a collaborator on this film. Um, it was his job, really, to find these frames in which, A, for the documentary stuff, to create these sort of sober images. That were that would allow you to think through them in a way. Um, he's a very expressive film uh, cinematographer, and we knew that we couldn't just be like listen to Philip or something, which is very expressive and handheld. And and what there's obviously some of that stuff in here, but it's mostly cool, really distant, and that and that was something that he um, that he knew that he needed we needed to do in order for you to for the for the tone to be right, and then. For the reenactment stuff, I mean, that stuff was, once again, just like Kate's impossible task, Sean's impossible task, like, okay, I want it to be great, but I also want it to be terrible at the same time, and how can we do that? I, he, he described, um, he's like, the way he wanted it to look was, imagine going, you're in Poland, and you go into a thrift store, and there's this really cool VHS box that's like this big, of this, uh, this soap opera, and you're like, and it's got this really crazy cover, and you're like, that's what I want it to look like. And you watch the soap opera, of course, it's boring, you don't know what's going on. But the imagination you have that this might be that is what he wanted to do. And, and you know, he just, he knows what he's doing. And, um, and so it, the, the ability to make something cheesy and still expressive at the same time 
is a in like a an impossible task, and he's he you know he should be up here too. He's he's the he's the best. Did you ever talk with any members of her family? Yeah, we we know where her brother is. Um, he doesn't want to talk about it, and I didn't. The goal of the movie isn't really to pry that open, you know. Um, I mean, the, the the only thing I can imagine is maybe if he slammed the door in our face or something, we may use that. But like, but if he lived in Sarasota, it would be a different thing. To me, the film is about going to Sarasota and seeing what's there. It's not really about like uncovering all the stones. We didn't go to Ohio where she's from. We didn't. We 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 even didn't even use this um, this crazy coincidence happened where we cast an extra. Um, and the extra was, I, I walked on set, I was like, because we had a set, which is on um, Dr. Nerd Filmmaker, it's very rare for me to have a set, and I said, we're not going to use her, so could you probably just tell her not to waste your time. As, the, as my producer was telling her to leave, she started talking about the fact that the extra went to, the, went to Christine Chubbuck's high school, in, which is a, a rich prep school place in Ohio, and we didn't even use, and, and which is a mi miracle, like a miraculous thing, and we didn't even use that because it wasn't really about like prying open everything we could. It was more about like what is she in our imagination, sort of, and how does she affect Kate? Um, so, yeah, I was never, I was. It was really important for you, the audience, to know what happened to them, um, but it was never important for me to, to talk to him, mainly because he doesn't want to talk about it. And I'm not, I'm, and this isn't Dateline, you know, like, I don't have to bother him. We have time for one more. Oh, and it's going to be Amanda. <laughs> um, that the last part was coming from a real place for me, or that, that was something that she wanted to act out? Well, the, the question is the last part, is that, is that coming from a real place, or is that like an, an act? The thing about actors is you can't tell. And... That doesn't mean they're inauthentic. That means they're artists. So it's like saying, like, when you're shooting something, is what you wanted to shoot really what you wanted to shoot, or is it what you happened to be shooting at the time? It's like it's an impossible question to answer. It, she was very frustrated. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, she was very mad. But like at the same time, she was like, but at the same time, she's an artist. So she was like, I know I'm supposed to be mad. So it's, that's, what, that's what's so impossible and, and miraculous to me about her performance is she was able to be angry with me and then turn that into a productive thing. And then at the end of the day, we were like, wow, you were able to be angry with me. Isn't that amazing? Like, yeah, that's what I do. I'm an actor. You know? And so it's, it's both at the same time. Um, I think it's very genuine. It's also scripted. And I love that. I love that it's, you can't tell, kind of. I mean, one of the, one of the, the secrets of the whole thing really is that we, we, early on, Sean and uh, my producer, Bennett, both told me one of the things we have to make sure we're doing is being healthy the whole time. You know, like, let's play Monopoly and let's drink beer and let's go to weird Sarasota, you know, bars and stuff that, you know, it's a weird place. And let's go enjoy each other because we're old friends. We've all known each other for many, many, many years. And that and that was hard for me as a documentary filmmaker because my instinct is to film all the time, all the time. You know, you got to get everything because who knows what you need, right? And I'm also an editor, so I'm also thinking of footage. Um, but that was crucial to it because Kate needed to come in and out, and if she didn't, it she wouldn't have been able to process and then create the way she did. Um, so in that way, it's proudly more fictional than non-fictional, you know, like, um, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get anything that was c touching that, and who knows if we'd be friends today, but instead where we, you know, I, I think it's a great collaboration, and I'm very proud of that, so. It means everything to me that you guys stayed. Wow, that's really nice. Um, my Sundance was amazing, this is a great way to end it. So thank you all very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.